Hey guys, today I'd like to show you some comparison between C++ and Rust when it comes to dispatch, static dispatch, dynamic dispatch, so trades and virtual calls and yeah, dynamic and impl and stuff like this. So let's have a look. Here's our fabulous God Bolt. Uh, we're gonna start with C++ and I'm gonna bore you to death with ARM64 because why not? Okay, so let's see what's our first chapter. Our well, first chapter is to take a function, a simple function that will calculate the area. Let's put that into Godbolt then. Here we've got uh, two functions, area of a square and area of a triangle. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a quick uh, overview of, of the assembly. So you can see that uh, area square is this function here. This is just one instruction multiply register w0 by by w0 and the result goes into w0 so this is a times b and this is the result and this is how what this instruction really is so you can see that this whole function is essentially one instruction multiply in here and over triangle is uh, multiply and divide by two so we can see here that we will multiply um, first register by the second register. So this is the calling convention on ARM um, that in the first, second and so on, the arguments are passed. So the first argument here is the only argument it is register W0. And in case of triangle, we have two registers because we have two arguments, zero and one. And the result of multiplication goes to register zero. So we override the register W0 with the result of W0 times W1. And this is our first side by height multiplication. Right. And then we have to, you know, we have to divide by two. So this part of the code is doing the division by two. So uh, it, it looks like on ARM, uh, this, this is going to be two instructions. Right. So one will be to um, add to W0, W0 shifted um, by 31 bits. So that's kind of interesting. And then we, we shift right by one, right? So when we shift right by one, it's like two to power one, so that we divide by two. So this is how, how the division is implemented here. Now, um, the main is just returning 125. So what happened here, the compiler, the C++ compiler, you see, it evaluated all this at compile time. The compiler just, well, I know that it's five, I know it's 10 and 20. I can just put the 10 and 20 here, five here, the result is, you know, whatever the value, 25, right? 10 and 20, it's uh, 200, and then by two is 100. So it's 125, so, you know, it's, it's, it's what happened here, right? So we can see how, how straightforward this is and how simple the ARM assembly is actually. So, right, so this is, this is the, the simple uh, code, uh, actually a C code that uh, calculates a sum of two areas of two shapes, triangle and square. How about we complicate it a little bit and we add a flavor of uh, structures. Let's add some structures. Let's see what will happen if we put, you know, square and triangle into structures. And we can see that the result is exactly the same. When I put this code in, the result didn't change at all. Compiler is smart enough to figure out that all of that stuff here is literally the same thing. And you can also see that I'm passing by value. Square is passed by value, triangle is passed by value. Guess what? Compiler doesn't really care. Compiler, for compiler, triangle is just, you know, um, W1, W0, right? Okay, anyway, the result is almost the same. Nothing really changed. Let's, let's look at the, um, Another one. Let's look at the virtual calls. So we have to stroke the natural for us would be like, how about we create a base class with virtual method aria and just, you know, create an array and maybe, you know, see what's the sum of areas of all those shapes, right? So let's, let's look at this. We have a shape, we have a square, which is a shape, a virtual area, right? It's an override of this area here. Um, th this code isn't um, using the encapsulation really. What we're doing here, we, we have an option to run the static and we also have an option to do the dynamic thing. So run static means uh, the method was defined as virtual and there is overrides, but we call those methods in a way that compiler knows that this is actually the 
square method, and this is actually the triangle method. So this will be interesting to see what compiler will do with this one, right? Because compiler will know that this, these are already known and these also are known. And next thing is total area when we have two references to shape. So we don't know anymore if shape is square or triangle, these are references. So this has to be using the virtual calls, right? So we'll see if the compiler in fact will use virtual calls or will it, um, you know, do something else. Let's, let's see. And then uh, total area two, to make sure that compiler doesn't cheat, we pass a pointer to an array of pointers of shapes, right? So, so those pointers to, to const shapes are in the array and we're passing an, a pointer to that array and we're passing a count. So this is very like a C style, you know, we, I didn't put here a density vector to not complicate the output assembly. I just wanted something ridiculously simple. So this is how I go around this array and calculate the total sum of all, all areas of this of these shapes. You can see it's a virtual call here. So I'm sure this will be compiled as a virtual call. And now we have this mm, to, to run dynamic and run dynamic too. Run dynamic will use the first total area, which is using two shapes. And run dynamic two will, will go over array and, and use this the second approach. And the main will test all the three approaches. So let's see what will happen here. I'm going to copy this to Godbolt and see what Godbolt will tell me about it. Bang, compiling. All right, let's see what happens here. So we can, we can see that this, um, this area, square area, is almost still the same thing, right? Uh, this, this is just, you know, extra instruction to, to access the reference. So we, we have to access the reference uh, to, this, to the square, right? Um, so this x0 initially holds a pointer to a square. Triangle, you see, is going to be a similar story here. We're loading pair w0, w, w1 from, from this location. So this is actually a smart way in, you know, uh, on ARM, you can uh, load values of two registers from one memory address and ARM will just load all the subsequent bytes filling in those two registers, right? Because for the calculation, we need, uh, you know, side and height, which are member variables. So in this single instruction on ARM, we just load them into two registers and we continue as usual. The next thing is run static. So run static, well, it returns 125, you know, uh, our compiler knows that, uh, you know, we have um, this square and triangle and those those methods, you know, it, it knows what they evaluate, to, right? It's all static. So, you know, compiler, compiler knows the types, compiler knows the arguments and everything. So it will just give you the, the value straight away. It will not call any function in this in this case, right? Let's see. Um, Let's see the run dynamic and others, right? So for, for run dynamic, uh, surprise, surprise, uh, it returns 125 outright. Uh, compiler was smart enough to figure out that, uh, you know, we, we might be passing here shape one as one, shape two as two, but compiler was smart enough to figure out that shape one is a square, shape two is a triangle, and well, it just did it. It just did it, okay? We can see that this is the case. It returns 125. <laughs> so smart compilers. Compiler knows best what to do. Trust your compiler. So um, let's see what the total area two does because that one has to be dynamic, right? So we can see in, it is indeed dynamic. There is some virtual table and there is something interesting going on here. So in run dynamic, we have uh, the square and tri triangle again. We have an array of shapes. And we have this total area two, but I don't see here total area two. Oh, there is a total area two, but we we can see that uh, run dynamic two was kind of optimized because we already are loading here the addresses from virtual tables. So this one is actually loading a page, a page on which the virtual table exists, and then you know there is add here to. Um, add an offset. So these two instructions, ADRP and this add all together, they load into register X2 the offset, the, the, the address, the full address, the full 64 bit address of this, I think V table, right? Plus 16. So I'm not sure 
what would that be? I need to track this code down to see what we actually are loading because what we need is an um, address of this function area for this particular type. And then what are we gonna do? We call area, we call area, right? So it, it looks like the, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here because we, it's, it's in run dynamic, we, we call square area const you know, we jump there to square area const and it, it looks like the compiler didn't really bother um, calling total area here, you know. It did a compile total area function, total area 2, which does some stuff. But um, it looks like the run dynamic uh, compiler decided to just, just drop all this stuff and just unroll. I'm surprised that it didn't come to conclusion that we can just compact all this into, you know, return 125. So I, I use optimization 03, so um, I don't know. It did some, some optimization, but it didn't figure out that uh, this can be compacted. Whereas in this other one in here, it did. So interesting. Um, it could be compacted because what we have here is square is known value is now this is all constant triangle this is all constant it will not never change this array um, this is constant it's, it's an array of pointers but um you know if compiler is trying to evaluate this at compile time it will figure this out that this is all just you know all the values should be constant and and why why would it not just unroll it into something like like this <laughs> Right? It was too hard. It was too hard. All right. Let's let's look at the static dispatch. Okay. So this was dynamic dispatch, and even with dynamic dispatch, we can see that compiler is doing weird stuff. Um, but let let's go ahead and let's see the uh, static dispatch. So the next thing will be concepts. Right. So yes, uh, yes, yes. This is 36 line of C++ code that is very involved. Uh, it uses um, C++ templates and concepts, as you can see, and well, it produces 125. That's what it does, <laughs> right? <laughs> so what what is happening here? So let me tell you what is happening here. So we we still have this struct. I call it square imp. Why did I call it imp? Because um, I defined square and triangle as concepts. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to say Okay, we will have a concept of a square which have a side and concept of a triangle which has a side and height. And now I have an area of something, of anything, of any auto S that happens to satisfy square concept. So area of square of something like this will be S side times S side. So if you have a, something that looks like square, so something that has a side, um, you can call area square on this, right? And we happen to have this square imp that, that is a square because it satisfies the requirement to be a square. And the same for triangle. We have a real triangle for something that is a triangle. So it's not a type triangle. It is a concept triangle. You can see that this is a concept which says something that will have side and height that is an int. And we have a triangle imp which has side and height. And yeah, it satisfies it. So we can call area square square imp like this so why did i put triangle brackets i did tri put triangle brackets because well if i don't put them we're gonna have compilation error and the reason we're getting compilation error is because this area square is a template function and this auto s cannot be deducted from curly brackets because they don't mean anything right so you could put here a square like this and it still works right so we are passing to area square square imp and this is this is where c++ will deduct the type for um, the, this auto to be square imp or the alternative is to just say uh, don't deduct just use my type use square imp as the type you know you may ask question wait a second i'm passing here template type there is no template where there is auto is a template so putting here auto is nothing else than saying i can just say the same thing exactly same if i say here t uh, template uh, not class 
square t, right? And it's exactly the same. And that also is the same thing as me saying class. And then we can say here requires uh, square t, right? That will be the same. There's so many ways of writing this. But uh, of course, this is so too much to write and we shouldn't write so much, we should write less. So that's the beautiful way of writing in C++ that we don't have to use any templates anymore. Everything is a concept now. And I love concepts, right? I love concepts so much that um, I prefer Roost. <laughs> and I show you why in a moment. Now let's 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 delete all this. So we see that it all compiles to 125. Let me just copy this into Godbolt. So what we have here is I included concept. I have square, I have triangle, and now there are methods, aria. So aria is now a method of those things. And we can see that um, you know main uh, returns 125, right? And um, total aria returns zero. Ah, yeah, because we have this function here. So yeah, this is, this is an interesting one well, because what I did, um, you see, th this total aria is actually a function that gets compiled as we can see, whereas uh, total aria template is not. And this one is required because we have this um, parameter packing, right? Template parameter packing. So this is a recursive, you know, ex evaluation here going on. And this function is, you know, the terminal one where where, the, where we're passing the total area of, of all the axes, but if the axis, there is nothing there. So this is this case, right? So I need to compile to something like this. I tried to put template and just this, and it didn't compile. So, um, so yeah, like, like this, maybe you know how to fix this so that it doesn't appear here. <laughs> um, so what happens is I have a main, obviously square and triangle as always. They're all known to the compiler at compile time. I call total area. Now, question is which one? I'm probably calling this one because there is two parameters. And what happens next? Shape T1 becomes, you know, this square, and then shape and three dots becomes, you know, more types. And you know, the second type will be triangle, and there is no more types. So, <laughs> so this is what it is. So the value will be x1 area plus total area of the remainder. So x1 area will be, well, in this case, it's going to be a square. And then the total area of the remainder will be n, we call again the same function. And the same function now receives as a t1 this, this t, which is triangle. So it's going to be triangle area plus total area, which in this case is going to be this total area. right? So we have a total area of square plus total area of triangle and so on. So um, yeah, so this is how this works, a recursive template. Um, how, how, the, how the concepts are now defined? Concept is now defined that we have a shape. Now it's a new concept, it's a shape concept. And shape concept says, if we have a const reference to our t, aria can be uh, obtained using the function aria, which has to be, you know, const, because we have a const reference and it returns an int, right? So I define this concept shape and I have it implemented here, you see aria, which is a const for the square, const for the triangle, and returns the value for aria. All right, again, it compiles to 125, surprise. Now, let's look at another version of it, more complex. So here, we extended this a little bit further, and instead of putting methods in those square implementation and triangle implementation, I decided to make it all concepts. So instead we have square imp, which just has a side, nothing else. And we have triangle imp, which has side and height. Okay, so we have just two structs. They don't have anything inside, no polymorphism, no nothing. And what happens next? I define a concept of a square. So I'm now saying, you know, this is some implementation of a square. And now we have a concept of a square. Bear with me for a moment. So concept of a square says it has a side, okay? I'm going to get back to this in a moment. Now the concept of a triangle says it has a side and a height. And now what I'm doing is I am defining an area trait. Area trait by default is undefined. The content is, uh, the, the, the class is undefined. The area trait for anything T, anything T, any type, that satisfies square concept. So aria traits for anything that satisfies square concept 
is computed this way, right? But a real trade for anything that satisfies triangle concept is calculated this way. So I have trade defined for some t, and depending if that t satisfies concept A or B, I'm choosing a different trade a version, right? But there was a problem with that. There is some ambiguity between square and triangle. And I tell you where this ambiguity is. So apparently to the compiler, triangle became a square. Because you see, if I define square concept as something that has side, guess what? Triangle also has a side. And, you know, for some reason, compiler wanted triangle to be a square. And then it could also be a triangle, right? Because it matched both both concepts. It 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 was you know it, it just chose the first one matching. It was square square was matching and triangle was matching. I, I was expecting that compiler would be smarter and would choose most fitting concept, meaning that you know this one has more detailed exp explanation what triangle is than this one, right? So to make sure that uh, you know. I resolve this ambiguity and compiler knows that square is square and triangle is triangle. I added this is triangle is square functions that are not really even implemented. I just say that there exists a function is square that takes something that is a square and there exists a function is triangle that takes something that is a triangle. And in this way, I can now disambiguate between square and triangle when I say I have array of traits for the sum t because the t is some concrete type, but in this case, well, it's a template parameter, right? How do we know how these t's are different? The only thing that differentiates them is the concept. And this concept need to be non-ambiguous. You have this extra, you know, thing that makes them not non-ambiguous. Right, so what happens next? I'm implementing the total area now in the same recursive way as last time. It's just now I'm using area traits area to calculate the area of some x, right, some type x. And here I'm saying the x itself is, well, something that is a shape, but you can see it's a type list. So every t is different in this function. It's, it's not like there is all of them are just shape. All of them are like different t's, t1, t2, t3, t4. And, you know, they all, all those t1, t2, t3, t4, each of them is satisfying shape concept, but each of those t's is a different type, right? So what I'm saying here is total area will calculate a sum of areas of all the shapes without actually knowing, you know, the actual type of those shapes. So kind of virtual, but without any dynamic polymorphism, it's completely static. And as we can see, the return values are 125 and 250, which is the sum of these two, when we look at how those are computed at the end, right? So if I run the traits um, and I say I have square, I have triangle, and then I calculate V1 to be area of square, V2 area of triangle, this is a sum. Then of course, I'm gonna have at compile time, it will know it will know that it is uh, 125. Uh, the same is with, um, if I do it this way, if I do total area, which is, which is this template function here, which is recursively evaluated at compile time. And at the end, we just make sure that all those functions are used so that compiler doesn't drop them. Okay, let's see what is next in our menu. I will now show you the Rust equivalents. So this is the equivalent of the first C++ code. Let me remind you what was the first C++ code looking like. It was a function, as you can see. So this was int area square, int area triangle, main and so on. And all that now in Rust looks like this. It's fn square area, fn triangle area, fn main. All right. So with optimization level one, we can see that Rust returns 125. Surprise, surprise. Rust is smart enough to figure this out, right? Let's see the, another equivalent of the C++ function. Okay, so here I have introduced structs. So we have a struct square, struct triangle, we have area. All of this is statically known to Rust. Rust knows that, you know, if I have a square V1, if I have a triangle V2, if I'm calling on V1 area, I'm calling area on square and I'm calling area on triangle, right? And those functions are well known to Rust. It knows 
uh, what they evaluate to because these values are constant here so the result is just 125 again not much difference from c++ maybe the code looks prettier okay let's proceed to trades now so now we have a square and triangle i just define constructors and that's it and now i define this trade shape and i say that the trade shape has area remember c++ concepts when i did the shape concept let me just show you that for a second all right so this is c++ equivalent you have shape concept and we say that um, the t the const reference to t has a method area and in roost it looks like this it's exactly the same thing it is so trade is a concept it is the same thing in this case so if i'm implementing shape for square what am i actually doing in this case i have implemented it like this right and a method in 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 a, in a square a method in a triangle right so this isn't exactly the equivalent of um, this this thing and it is not an equivalent of this thing simply because i can write this code after someone else writes this code meaning that this can be a different library someone can define a square and triangle in some library and they didn't do not define um, the area method or, or trait or anything like this i am defining this straight shape and i am defining this implementation of area in my module in my library right so what is the equivalent in c of doing that of course this wouldn't be an equivalent because um, this area here is a method of the struct square so we said that this square and triangle were implemented by someone else in some other module and now you know we would like to implement this area uh, you know on, on our side ourselves so we cannot be defining it this way so this is why i created the second uh, concept example where you see the square imp and triangle imp are examples of those structs implemented by someone else in some other library and now i am defining here this concept of a shape in my library i'm defining a concept of square and triangle even it can be part of my library to define is square is triangle these two functions do not need to be defined together with those right i can just define them together with my concepts and then you see i have this area traits and depending on the type of um, the shape i have a different implementation of this trait so this would be equivalent of the imp shape for square and imp shape for triangle right so this is imp shape for square right and this is imp shape for triangle effectively we can see the result is 125 anyway because roost knows that uh, in this case the types uh, we, we we're using are static so we have square we have triangle we're calling trait methods but roost knows them very well because these are the types and so on and these are the functions the same story as in case of concepts right everything was static and everything compared to 125. okay let's see the more complex example so let's look at this rust code here we have this square and we have this triangle i have added this derive clone copy for one purpose in one of the examples below i'll be using this implicit copy so what copy does is it changes the default behavior of this struct to be the same way as it is in c so when you pass by value you copy and not move as it is in root by default but this is only needed for just one specific example and the rest of this code here would work without this clone and copy so let's have a look at the definition so we have a square it has constructor triangle it has constructor and we are back to the shape uh, trait um, there exists shape trait we have shape trait with the area uh, which we implemented and then we have this total area now there is a total area static which takes an array of impulse shape right and there is a total area dynamic which uh, takes shapes array of din shape now there is few things for you to notice okay so when we say static in roost 
um, this shapes argument here will be an array of some type t here but uh, this type it's like auto right it's like auto it's like this function here with one exception though in here we have as many t's as many arguments so every argument in this argument list can have different type each of them is guaranteed to satisfy shape concept however here we have just simple array and all elements in this array have to have same type t not a specific type t shape is not a type shape is a trait so we're saying this is a function that takes an array of some type t which implements a shape but uh, all of those t's have to be the same right so it can be a function that takes an array of squares or it, a function that takes an, a, an array of triangles right so this is what this means you cannot mix here triangles and squares because then this array will be of the t wouldn't be the same right so that's that's where imp is is going to be used and uh, the implementation here is like this so we take the the shapes the array uh, i take the iterator i map every element into area and i sum them together right not necessarily this is um, the most efficient implementation perhaps if i implemented this as a simple loop the code could be well the assembly might look better <laughs> But this is nice, rustic way of, uh, you know, doing things with collections, right? If you look at total area dynamic, uh, the definition is very much similar to the, the static one. We're taking an um, array of dynamic references to shape, right? So this is actually equivalent to C++ function, which we talked about uh, in this case here, where we were passing in an array of pointers to shape which was a you know abstract class right so yeah so so here it will be dynamic it will not be compiler will not be able to know um the, the types of that we're passing here and to do much optimizations all this calls to x area this will have to be dynamic um you know traits right so because we say here dy dynamic shape for, for this to happen, what Rus needs to do, Rus needs to create a virtual table, right? So the same thing as C++ is doing when we say this. The difference between Rus and C++ is that in C++ to have dynamic dispatch, you define abstract class and then you implement these virtual methods, right? And in order to have static dispatch, we implement traits and concepts, right? So so this is this is how you do it it's a completely different uh, code in this case right so static dispatch in c++ looks like this we have a concept shape and we have this some traits maybe even right and dynamic dispatch we have this class and a virtual function and in case of roost it's the same thing right it's one code it's it's just one trait you just say trait shape aria that's it you don't need to worry if it's dynamic or static and this is where some people, you know, don't necessarily understand it fully because uh, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. And things that work and don't work is usually the situation that we may have a method here in this thread that's uh, defined as generic. And then virtual table cannot be created for this trait because, um, you know, generic methods cannot be virtual. However, um, in this example, we don't have this problem. Now, if virtual table cannot be created, then of course DIN cannot be used and you won't be able to do this, right? You won't be able to dispatch dynamically um, the calls. Let, let's look at the outcome of what this code actually compiled us. Maybe we can find something interesting here. So we can see that uh, uh, the main return 375 surprise just the value which uh, says run static run dynamic but Rust knows that the value is 375 um, run dynamic returns 125 Rust knows that it's 125 look at that Rust is smart and then run static returns 250 look at this Rust figured this out right so even though Rust has uh, compiled those methods total area dynamic and static 
and there is a lot of code you can see here that uh, is the implementation of those methods. This is only for when you want to link dynamically against this um, library. If it was a library and there you have a fun these functions that you want to link against them, um, then, then you would use this implementation that may be not so efficient, right? So you can see here we have actually implementation of Ether, Map, uh, and uh, then we have, what do we have? Zoom, right? So the implementations of those were borrowed from the standard library. And then we have more of this, okay. And then we have stat total area static, um, which is also a lot of assembly code, right? And total area dynamic. So we see that if we were to link against this library from the other code, this is the code that we will be executing. If we just execute this using constant values, Roost is able to compact everything just one number. And it is able to, to just know just run this at compile time and tell you, okay, so this is this is it, this is the file. All right, I hope I have explained to you the differences between Roost and C++ when it comes to static and dynamic dispatch. I hope you see on this example how beautiful Roost is, how simple this is, right? So, so you have this trait here and that's all you have. You don't have to worry about virtual methods, well, until compiler will tell you that it cannot generate them for you. You don't have to worry about the rest of the interface. So for example, you can you can just go ahead and define then or imp uh, at any time and you don't have to re redefine all this inter like you do not need to suddenly um, you know redefine this type trait shape, right? Uh, in C++ case, if you have to switch from dynamic to, to static dispatch or the other way around, it, it's a lot of rework, right? So uh, in C++, if you were to, if you wrote originally this code, and now you want to, you know, jump from this, say, ah, oh, this is so slow, I don't want a dynamic, I want a static, and this is what you need to write. So you essentially need to delete all your creator and, uh, you know, start from the beginning because, you know, this this is completely different code, right? Right, so so that's that's what I wanted to talk about in this presentation, um, and yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, see you soon.